Hey guys and how are you all doing? My name is John and well, today I'm gonna be checking out a drone. Now, aerial photography and cinematography is something that I've been into for quite a while and well therefore I'm a big fan of drones. Now, undoubtedly the leader in consumer drones and prosumer and generally commercial, generally anything that has to do with drones is DJI. And well, I think the drone we're checking out today, the DJI Mavic 2 Pro, is the best drone for any kind of run and gun on the go photographer or videographer out right now. And I'm gonna be developing on this video quite a bit. And I'm gonna start by mentioning what was the problem with my previous drone. Now, prior to this drone, I had the Phantom 3 Professional, a 4K video recording DJI Phantom drone. Now, it was a great drone, it had great range, great battery life, all things about it were nice. However, it had one massive disadvantage and for me, that was its size. You see, this drone could not fit in my go-to travel bag, the lower pro Pro Tactic 350 Mark II because, well, it was simply a massive bulk, which means that I needed to take an extra bug and an extra bulk wherever I wanted to take my drone. Not very nice for when you just want to go at a trip and have your drone with you in case you find something nice to capture. With the Mavic 2 Pro though, that's not a problem because this drone is just barely bigger than my phone when it's all collapsed, so it just fits in my bag no problem and I can take it wherever I want without the need to carry any extra backpacks or whatever the case might be. So originally the Mavic 1, the first iteration of the Mavic drone, was something that I wasn't really into and that was because it just felt like for the money it wasn't that good of a camera compared to the Phantom series. However with the Mavic 2 Pro, well these things changed and it immediately jumped in my radar for one reason. Well, two of them. Primarily though, it was the camera and especially the camera sensor because this drone's camera sensor is co-engineered with Hasselblad. Now, if you don't know, the company Hasselblad is pretty much a leader in film cameras and generally medium format cameras which are bigger, professional and touch way too expensive prices that I would never be able to afford. Now, this co-engineering with Hasselblad, I believe, has made the DJI Mavic 2 Pro's camera be one of the best cameras and, well, one of the best camera sensors on any consumer drone right now. Now, when it comes to image sensors, the smaller is not always the better. It's actually quite the opposite. The bigger, the better in every kind of situation. And especially when it comes in low light performance, if you don't have a big sensor, not a lot of light will be able to reach that sensor and you won't have great results. But with this one in sensor, you can get to have some pretty nice or decent to say the least results at evening and night time. So, you know, those sunset shoots and those, well, dusk, if you may, shoots are going to be much nicer in this drone, which has a bigger sensor. Now, photos that are produced from this image sensor and this camera are quite nice and I have absolutely no problem with them whatsoever. As for video, it can do 4K at 25 frames per second and also 1080 at 60 frames per second. So overall, you got some nice slow-mo if you want to film, let's say, a family vacation, your kids, your dog, whatever the case might be. And also some nice 4K 24p in case you want to do something more cinematic. Now, when you add this incredible camera to a DJI I made gimbal, you got yourself the ultimate combination for a drone. The gimbal is great, it obviously does a stunning job minimizing any kind of shake on the camera and you got battery smooth footage for days. And overall this package will not disappoint any kind of creator right now. Also, DJI has been kind enough to include things like D-Log, which is kind of a more flat profile in case you don't like Hasselblad's color science, which is incredibly accurate right out of the camera, by the way, and you want to do some more customization on your own. Now, moving on to the design, all this capability is packed in a really, really small package. It's relatively heavy, so it does have some heft to it and any kind of wind will not just take it away, but also it's very, very compact and when folded down, the drone is actually just a tad bigger than my Samsung Galaxy Note 9. Pretty, pretty handy when you want to actually carry it around. Also, the whole folding technique is not really anything complicated. You can be actually going ahead and flying the drone in very, very short period of time from the time you will take it out of your backpack. And yes, finally, a drone that fits in my backpack comfortably and have some good quality. And well, you can be ready to fly in just seconds. Now, the controller of the drone is going to be how you interact with it. So it needs to be good and ergonomic. 
Now it is small and compact just like the drone so you can just fit it at your backpack or even on your pocket with no problem and the fact that the two joysticks are actually detachable from the actual positions and storable inside the controller is a very nice and handy little thing so you don't have two things protruding on your backpack. However, given that it has a very small size, I am a bit of a fan of the Phantom controller better because this bigger controller really gives me some extra sturdiness when controlling the drone and makes me be more sure of what I'm actually doing. You know, it gives me that feeling that I'm actually doing something important. However, the little LCD on the drone that gives me some vital information of the drone and its condition as I'm flying is quite a very um useful thing especially if i want to fly the drone without needing my phone now this small lcd will show you information such as your rpm your revs per minute on the propellers and also your range and stuff like that overall things that you want to know on the fly now last but not the least battery life on the drone is not so bad either it can give me 30 to 40 minutes of flight time give or take depending on the weather conditions and where you're flying However, I've not yet bought a second battery for it and I've had no problem with it whatsoever. But it's time to reach a conclusion. Now, this drone is great looking, very compact, which is nice. It has some incredible video capabilities and photo capabilities, a great sensor and great color science on the footage it produces. And overall, I'd say it's an incredibly little machine that is not going to disappoint anyone that's willing to buy it. Now, I think DJI made it. They made the perfect little drone for anyone that's like doing YouTube videos or even some corporate work as well instead of just some personal prosumer level uh, job because you're paying a premium but you are getting a lot out of this drone and for a consumer drone, you can't really go wrong. By the way guys, that's all good for me in this video. If you like it, you might want to click the subscribe button and also leave a like on the video if you found it interesting. My name has been John and I'll see you again in the next video. Goodbye.